Hello, welcome to a wrap-up video for session seven of Programming from A to Z on this YouTube channel of mine that has an undefined name at the moment, but someday it might have a defined name. So what I'm asking for you to do as a homework exercise for this particular session on grammars, specifically context-free grammars, is essentially to write a computer, well, there's a lot of things you could do, but if you're looking for something, have a computer program write your own story and write that story differently each time. So you can see this one example that was written by a this is written by a five-year-old and an eight-year-old together collaboratively um, and, uh, you could, and using the tracery grammar. So that, would, that might be a first thing that you start. Find this example linked to in this video and modify the story. Um, really, th I think one thing to think about is like how much variation can you, can you embed into the grammar? Can the story sometimes only be one sentence long and sometimes be you know, hundreds or thousands of words long. So think about this sort of like how you might really explore um, variety and parameterize, if that's even a word to use, the, the, the way that the grammar works, how nested or unnested it could be. So you can think about writing a story. The other thing that grammars are particularly good at uh, context-free grammars are generating text that fits into a very sort of prescriptive pattern. So one of my favorite bots on Twitter is the art assignment bot. And you can skip the exercise that I'm, I'm talking about and you can just do this one, which is from 42 minutes ago, construct a wood carving researching the history of embosses due on Thursday, May 25th, 2017. Or build a photograph about tools due on Tuesday, November 2nd. So this you can see, you can really, I don't know that this is made with a context-free grammar, but you could imagine describing the grammar for this. So if you were to create um, you know, a spell book, I think is a classic scenario that I think there are some tracery examples that do this. Um, creating a recipe book or what types of kind of statements define statements. The other thing that I think is, you know, what I've done in these two sessions is I've showed you Markov chains. Here's what a Markov chain is, and here's what a Markov chain does. Here's what a context-free grammar is, and here's what a context-free grammar does. So on the one hand, an exercise is just take my exact examples and produce output. But I think really the magic of a project happens in the spaces in between. So maybe a Markov chain is just a little piece of one word inside of some text you're generating. And the context-free grammar just creates an overall structure, also you know, interfaces with an API. And so how is it that these could be a piece of the project? And also really in thinking about how, what's your presentation. So on the one hand, if you look at any of my examples, you know, this is just generating little sentences, but who is the character that's speaking? You know, what's the context? Is it a Twitter bot? Is it a web page? Um, there's a wonderful project in my class today that was looking at generating fake election ballots. And so using the visual language of a system that you're trying to emulate to sort of spark the idea in the viewer in either a playful way or a subversive way or to make a statement or just to tell a story, I think there's a lot of possibilities in thinking about the context and the visual design elements that are surround how and where you're generating that text. The other thing that I think is worth really noting here is that both with Markov chains and with context-free grammars, that words or characters, what is it, what's the sequence of the grammar? What is the grammar describing? Is it describing language? Is the language English? Is it an, for another language? Um, or is it musical notes? Or is it uh, designs? Is, do you have a context-free grammar that builds a design out of shapes and color? How might you explore something like that? So I encourage you to look at these examples, try tracery, try Rita, you know, as an exercise, you might try programming that recursive algorithm on your own and see what types of results you could get. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed session seven and you can share anything you make in the comments or uh, at Schiffman on Twitter. And of course, um, you know, I always sort of plug that if you feel so inclined, um, you can join the, uh, uh, the Patreon page, uh, and there's a Slack channel too to discuss and ask questions, okay? So see you in a future session, video, whatever, and um, talk to you soon.